let's have a look at how the system works and how it can be taken advantage of by area managers to better understand the flows and available materials in their area. After you register an account, you will see a new bar appearing with the account specific options. So you can see here my organizations, demand and supply map, full overview and forum. So in this video, we'll get a quick look at how can you manage your organizations and the associated data and better understand the potential for matchmaking. So first of all, you need to go to my organizations and, man and fill out some forms so that the system knows which organizations you manage. And we do that by first creating what we call clusters, which is a particular way of grouping the organizations under your management. And you can do it however you see fit. You create a name for a cluster and then put the organizations in there. So you could create a cluster based on geography and you could say a cluster that, that links to the particular sector or, or suburb within your area. Uh, or you could do it by type. So separate out the paper companies from the, the car dealerships, for instance. Um, you really can do this however you see fit. And if you don't see any need to group your organizations, just call this main group or main cluster and put them all in the same one. It's really all up to you. So let's say in my case, I have sector A and sector B. So after I add them, you can see that I have now the option to add organizations to each of these sectors. And when I click this link, it asks you a couple questions about this organization. So let's say we have a paper company in here. We can upload a logo, uh, add a description of what this company does. Um, this is all internal. It's not displayed anywhere. Um, you can manage details about the employees, um, then upload uh, or enter the address. Um, so let's say in this case, this is a company in Brussels. And we select it here. After you select the address, the system will automatically pull in the GPS coordinates. If for any reason you'd like to enter them yourself, you can just go to the fields and edit them there. Um, you select the what kind of company this is, and you can enter an email and a website if you want to. Now, after we save this, the system will create a record for this particular company. And that record has a couple of options. And we'll get to that in a second, uh, just so you know that you can also go back to the overview. And now you can see in cluster A, I have one company and I can add another one and keep doing that until I have all my companies added there. Now for this example, we'll just look at this particular company and we're going to add some information uh, around the uh, materials that are available or needed in this company. So as I go to the different tabs, you can see first of all the edit option here is a fairly simple um, edit field that just allows us to change the details we just entered. The key components that you'll use more often are the tabs that follow. So that's resources, space and technology. These are the options to enter what is needed or what is available for this company in those categories. So let's say this particular company has cardboard available. So under resources, there's nothing in here yet, but I would like to register that this company has that available. So I simply go to add a new entry. And as I do that, you can see I have a couple of options to find what I need. I can go to all materials and then browse the list or search here, or I can simply browse by type. Uh, in this case, I said we have cardboard, so that is under paper. And you can see here in cardboard, I can either log a supply, which means this company has that available for others to use, or it wants it, so I can log a demand. So in this case, let's say I log a supply, and the company has available 500 kilos of cardboard every month. And they tell you, listen, we have it available every month, but we would like that to be picked up in the last uh, week of the month. So for the month of June, I'll add that it is available 500 kilos from, these, uh, from this date to this date. You can add a description to describe it a bit more and you can add a photo if they provide you with a photo or you made one. So after I save it, this then gets added to the list of um, uh, resources that are in this case uh, supplied by this company. Uh, similarly, you can add a demand if the company says, listen, I need a particular resource um, and I need it to be available in a certain time frame or for a particular date, and you can add it in a very similar way. You just go to add new entry, you select it, and then you log a demand instead of a supply. 
Now, what you can also do is, in addition to managing these resources, you can manage space by saying, listen, this company has available surplus space for a certain time of the year or time of the month, or it needs space. And you can see here, this could be event space, internal or external storage, production space, um, meeting rooms or office space. All of these can be entered or, or other type of space and then you enter what it is. Um, and in this case, um, we select the space available and in this case, likely by square meters. Um, and you simply select what this company um, needs in that case or has available. So um, the same applies to technology and in technology, you can enter entries, for instance, equipment or vehicles that are available uh, or needed by this company. And you, you get the idea, it's the exact same form, but the important thing is to see what happens next. So in this case, I added just resources, 500 kilos of cardboard available. And what happens next is that as you enter things, the system will create a map. And that map is not just for this company, but it really combines everything for all the companies that are in your portfolio. So if I go there now, you can see that this creates a map and that's a very simple map because I only added one item, but it shows a dot here. And if I click on there, I can see that it has the details of what this company had available. Now I will show you in another map I made how it looks if you have more information in there. So here we can see a company or an account that has more added to it. You can see it has a number of, of companies. Uh, spread throughout with the core happening here. And if I were to zoom in more, you can really see that a number of things are available or needed within this area. And I can filter by type of layer. So that tells me what kind of, of products are we looking at. So let's say I wanna filter just for, for windows and I can see these are available. Um, and it, it, as you can see by color, it tells you some are available, some are needed, uh, demand and supply. I can also filter by to see one or the other. Um, and this, as you can see, it really allows me to quickly see how can I do a matchmaking uh, effort within my area. Um, and if we zoom out a bit, you can also see, okay, something else needed there, maybe it can supply here. Um, and if there are other things in the area, it really allows for this very quick and easy under understanding in terms of um, spatial elements, how to match things. Um, and back by, of course, searching for particular types, you can really see on a per, per product or per uh, waste flow or, or resource need type, what uh, can be done where. And in addition to seeing that on the map and being able to click it, you can also scroll down. Um, and as you scroll down, you'll see the, the full list of what is uh, currently met within the filter requirements that I indicated at the top. So this is really the, the full extent of the matchmaking tool. If we go back to our single unit, if I were to click on there, I can also view more details. And there's really sort of the record for this particular item um, to see who is offering and, and what is it that they're offering. Um, and of course, then if you are interested in, in making a match, it really all depends on your own workflow. Do you contact them? Do you call them? Um, or how do you try to engineer that? That is fully up to you. What we provide is a tool that allows you to, to do that matchmaking process. Um, the other page here, the full overview lists everything in one single page and allows you to search through it. Um, but it does that, of course, right now in a limited way as I only entered one entry, but you likely get the idea. And lastly, in the forum, you can chat with, with other people and with us about your experiences and ideas um, of, of how to manage data and how we can best help you. So we look forward to you trying it and also to your feedback on our system.